the uh, producer and co-director of this film, Roger Cass, is someone I've known for a long time. He's uh, had uh, a long career uh, shepherding other people's uh, projects as a, as a representative of films and with a long track record of great documentaries. Um, so I was uh, very pleased to uh, see him collaborating with his brother, uh, Doug Cass, as, who is the director of this film. Uh, it joined with Jonathan Franzen, on whom, uh, for, who wrote the original essay that this film is based. Uh, the three of them are going to uh, join me afterwards for a conversation after the show. But to get this started, I want to bring up the co-director and producer, Roger Cass. some brief notes, which I'm probably going to read, um, maybe I'd like a couple. Uh, but thank you, Tom. Thank you uh, to Rafael also, and everybody at Doc NYC uh, for doing such a great job. This, uh, this event is so already so compelling and essential in New York. Uh, and I also want to uh, join Tom in thanking all the volunteers, the staff, and the, the sponsors. Um, I need to make an especial uh, thanks to my amazing wife and executive producer, Andrea Van Buren. <laughs> First of all, for putting up with me in general, and uh, and also for uh, strong arming you all into filling this house tonight, which is great. Um, finally, I want to uh, thank everybody uh, for coming. Uh, in particular, my mom and dad are here, which is huge for Doug and I. Uh, thank you so much for coming, and uh, we'll we'll see you afterwards. Uh, Jonathan, I want to ask you. This started with an essay. Uh, you're a man of words, and, and I wonder what it's like when you see this footage, what you think the, the film does as a, as a supplement or an extension of what you originally wrote. Uh, it goes into the less detail about the legal and uh, governmental aspects of the story, um, and it, uh, it allows you to get to know the uh, the Italians. Um, I, I really think it's a, it's a movie about them, and it's a shame they're not here tonight. Uh, Andrea, in particular, is uh, he's, a, he's a real match, uh, and hilarious, too. Um, so I, to me, it's it, it turned into a very different thing, Bill, than what, what I'd written. Uh, Roger and Doug, can you talk about your experiences in the field um, uh, with these guys who are going out doing very dangerous stuff. Well, that's a perfect segue, actually, because uh, uh, I, I did want to mention that uh, you know, one of the joys of, of directing is, uh, is getting to marvel at uh, all the work of your collaborators. And so when you talk about being out in the field, uh, about half the film was shot by an outstanding uh, cinematographer named Michael Tucker, uh, who's did a lot of the really tough stuff on this shoot and kind of set the look for it. So uh, I attribute a lot of it to him. Uh, Michael Levine, who's a terrific editor, I think did a really poetic job in the edit. Uh, Marty Beller, who's uh, a fantastic composer and did great, great work for us and was terrific to collaborate. And as you said, uh, as, a, as a director doing an interview with someone who has a way with words, uh, makes your life a lot easier. So uh, it was great working with Jonathan. He also uh, is really uh, knows this stuff. This is not uh, sort of off the cuff. Uh, it was a great resource for the material. But uh, you know, shooting it uh, in the circumstances I was in, and I know that Michael Tucker faced, uh, is extremely dangerous. You know, uh, these guys, as you saw in the film, they're they're half crazy, as Jonathan put it, in a good way. Um, and to follow them with a camera is is maybe all crazy. You know, it's uh, it's uh, extremely dangerous, and um, you know, you use as small a camera as possible, try and be as subtle as possible out in the field, and you kind of have to watch your back. I mean, when people appear, they appear out of nowhere. There's not a lot of warning, and uh, uh, the circumstances are definitely difficult. Um, can you? Uh Bring us up to date more on the, the characters in this film. We got a, a little bit in the end credits there, but uh, anything more that you can say? Uh, I can address that. Um, in, in the end credits, uh, there's the reference to uh, the, the threat uh, by the poachers, thinking that Cavs was starting to get the upper hand in Cyprus. 
Uh, and Jonathan uh, remarked that it is a shame that they are that none of them are here. The reason none of them are here uh, is because on Saturday uh, they are facing a trial in Cyprus when they were in Cyprus again uh, during the migration in September, October. Um, they were all beaten up very badly again, and this time a uh, lawsuit was brought against them. Um, the details of which I'm just starting to find out, but uh, they are being uh, sued in a civil action. Uh, not a criminal action, but for trespass and destruction of property and other things. Uh, so they're all, uh, Sergio, Piero, and Andrea are all on their way to Cyprus now to face trial. Um, let's take some questions from the audience. Raise your hand. <clears throat> I'll call on you. Yes, right here. Good question. Uh, what is being done on the demand side to discourage people from eating these as delicacies? Uh, <clears throat> to my knowledge, not a great deal. Uh, and the, um, the, 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 the the less the less half crazy uh, bird protectors in Cyprus, for example, uh, Bird Life Cyprus. Uh, we saw Martin Helicar actually, I believe, uh, in this cut. Um, they try to go to, to, to put the focus on the restaurants, um, but it just as a, a sheer media matter, um, pulling, pulling food out of the hands of, you know, lovely women feeding their toddlers, little birds, doesn't play so well. Uh, so, <clears throat> and, and, and the fact is, these are really, this is, these, are, these are organized criminal gangs doing the wholesaling, um, especially in Cyprus. It's, uh, it's the same people who are, who are moving drugs and weapons and, and laundering cash. Um, so <clears throat> it's just a more productive line of attack. Um, and, and, and I think actually the fewer kids are eating the birds, and so eventually it will die out. Let's get a question. Yep, down here. Uh, the question is, does the film have a distributor? What, what's next in the life of this film? Uh, I'm, I'm in negotiations with various uh, uh, outlets actually around the world right now, and um, it will have distribution. Oh, right here. Questions about uh, local enforcement is—is is it due to uh, corruption in, in local politics that that these things uh, go ignored, or is it more just part a cultural thing? I think it's more cultural, uh, and <clears throat> Cyprus is Cyprus is kind of uh, not that into European style law. Um, it's, a, it's a Middle Eastern country that's accidentally part of the European Union. Um, and uh, uh, you know the police. When I when I gave my report, you know the person who took my my statement about the attack said, you know, um, we wish these guys were not so in our faces. Uh, you just let it go away by itself. So I think there's just a because these are you know it's your neighbor, um, and and there's enough kind of mom and pop. Uh, bird trapping, you know, your grandpa is out in the backyard with his lime sticks, and people are a little sensitive about thinking of their grandpas as criminals. After your essay was published in, in other languages and other uh, parts of, of Europe, did you get uh, feedback of the sort of, oh yeah, I didn't realize that this was a bad thing until I read this essay? Yeah, I think there's generally shock, although not, in, a lot of Europeans are at least a little bit aware. If they've been on vacation in, in Malta, they know you actually can't take a walk in the countryside because maniacs with guns are everywhere, <coughs> killing anything that flies. Um, and, you know, it's if you if you travel at all in the Mediterranean, you're aware to some extent that this is going on. So it's really America uh, where we just don't 
eat little birds, uh, that you have the real, like, oh my god, how could this be happening? I thought it was pretty, the Mediterranean. <laughs> um, question up there, woman? Yeah, what would you say are the top three um, anti-bird poaching organizations that are addressing this issue? And what would you estimate their annual budgets to be? Do you have any idea what CAPS's budget is? It must be tiny. Uh, yeah, it's tiny. I, I don't know what, what it is. Um, you know, BirdLife affiliates uh, are probably doing the most at all levels because they're going all the way up to European Court of Justice mm -hmm. and they're active in every country. So LIPU, which is, uh, I won't try to do the Italian version, but it's the it's the BirdLife. They're, um, you know, they all have relatively small budgets. WWF is very active in Italy. Um, but it's a volunteer effort, by and large. They're, it's really very moving. You have these people who have day jobs and who put on uniforms and are deputized by the forest police in Italy and spend their weekends and their after hours out trying to enforce the law. Um, there's, a, there's an outfit called uh, Euro Natur in Germany that uh, is very active in the Balkans, uh, and it must also have a tiny budget. None of these things, are, you know, that's. It's nature, uh, you know. It's not. It's not an iPad in every school, so it doesn't get the kind of um, doesn't get the corporate support that other things do. I guess that, that begs uh, another question for people who want to do something uh, uh, for this cause, who feel moved by this film. What can uh, uh, an American do? Um, well, you can uh, first and foremost probably. Uh, Get in touch with uh, the Committee Against Bird Slaughter in uh, in Bonn, Germany, where they're based. They have a website. Uh, they are uh, it's it's legal as an American citizen to donate to them, uh, and there are uh, other. Uh, it's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, you don't you don't face uh, you know certain restrictions because of their activities. Um, and they're, they're not they're, yet they're classified as a terrorist organization. <laughs> that, that's my point. Uh, <laughs> We'll see what the trial brings. Uh, there's there's Bird Life Cyprus. There is Lipu in Italy. There are uh, bird organizations all over Europe uh, that uh, that are somewhat involved in this uh, issue. But I'd, I'd say uh, Bird Life Cyprus, Lipu in Italy, and uh, and Cavs would be the places that I would uh, focus my uh, resources. Yeah, and actually, if you're uh, really into it, CABS does take volunteers from around the world, um, and uh, and they do get volunteers from around the world. We didn't focus on them, but uh, but you can go. No, they're called camps, work. and they really, um, yeah, uh, not not fancy, um, but Piero cooks, and uh, he's good. He's a good cook.